in because we're getting pictures now of what's called the family photo here at the G20. And any of you watching who are body language experts, we need your help on this because all of the leaders are gathering and everyone is watching this very keenly because it's the first proper sight we've had of Vladimir Putin and Donald Trump in the same place. There's Justin Trudeau. You can see Prime Minister Modi from India. There's Shinzo Abe from Japan. Donald Tusk, President of the European Council, Vladimir Putin, the Russian President. There's President Erdogan next to Vladimir Putin. A lot of the protesters I've spoken to in the last 48 hours say their ire is directed primarily towards Trump, Erdogan and Putin. They've put those three men in the same category, although we should say the three men do not put themselves in the same category, right in the centre of what is primarily a large group of men, although there's Theresa May wearing a blue jacket on the second row, Prime Minister of the UK, of course. Right in the centre is Angela Merkel. She is the host of this G20 summit. It's come down to her to set the agenda. There's Jean-Claude Juncker, President of the European Commission. It gives you an idea when you look at these pictures of quite what a concentration of powerful people this is. You could argue that any of the top world leaders with real sway over what's happening in our world are all within that one photo call that's taking place at the moment. And the argument behind the G20 is that it does that. It delivers everyone into one environment in which they can take policy decisions which can then be implemented. Bearing in mind, there goes Justin Trudeau, Prime Minister of Canada. We hear that Emmanuel Macron may have just swapped positions with Donald Trump. Donald Trump was towards the edge of that photo call. Lots of people analysing every last detail in how the leaders are interacting. There's Donald Trump just at the back of the group, stepping 